Gnomic just released their new version of their large language model. The new version is called GPT for all J, and that's what I'll be exploring today, hot off the presses, to get a first impression on what it is, how it compares to what it, uh, the GPT for all previous version, and see how capable it is. I haven't touched any of these local LLMs. So I thought today is the day with the new version, the Dash J that came out. Now, the concept for GPT for all is to democratize large language models. Gnomic does this by setting it up so that you can run a small enough model on your local computer. But beyond that, it allows it to run on your processor. So you don't have to have some killer GPU gamer rig in order to run it. So a vast majority of people that have access to a computer will be able to run a local, even without internet, large language model. The previously released version of GPT for all, the original, was running off of a fine-tuned Llama model. This is the readily available 7 billion parameter model. And you would think, the way things go, that the new model, GP2 for all J, would be bigger, better, faster, more capable, some giant leap in, in capacity. But actually, if anything, it is probably less capable than the original version. So why is this? Well, the new version is based off of GPT-J. And this is a 6 billion parameter model. A uh, billion less parameters, but its real benefit is that the original model was using a GPL license, which has real restrictions on the ability to use the resulting LLM in a commercial solution. So in the spirit of openness, Nomic bit the bullet and switched over to GPT-J as a base model which is under the Apache 2 license, which is much more open and you can create commercial solutions for it. So now that we know why they released this new version, the question is, how good is it? How hard is it to install? How painful? Oh, look, if I just go to the GitHub under gnomic-ai, GPT number four all, and you scroll down from the top in the readme, there's a section for installers, and if you go to the Windows installer, or your choice, Mac OS, Windows, Ubuntu, uh, I think this thing runs excellently on Mac M1 hardware. Uh, you get the downloader and, inst and just click on it. It's very lightweight. I think it's 30 meg for the installer here, and you just go through the dialogues, and it installs, it, it downloads and installs all the files that you need. Now, granted, the download is three gigabytes, so depending on your speeds, it may take a while, but a whole artificial intelligent brain neural network being on your local computer in three gigabytes is an impressive accomplishment for it. So that's all that is required, is that quick install, and that was part of the brilliance that Nomic did here is that they made it completely painless. Even as someone who's been in IT for a long time, I was I was really dreading doing this, uh, following the to the instructions and troubleshooting things to get it run locally. But this is literally one click, wait for a while, do the dialogues, and you have the model installed locally. And this is what you get as a result: a, a really clean user interface for it. I mean, this is all you need, a place to put your prompts, get your results. So I'm excited to fire this up. So let's ask it a first question. I always try and be nice. I'm excited for our first conversation. What model are you? And how many parameters does it have? I'll let this first one run in real time. I have an, I think an i9. Um, pretty good RAM on it. Again, it's an integrated laptop, but a fairly high-end machine. And it takes a while for this to cook. 
and the token generation on it is, it, it, you know, I've seen faster. For example, the chat GPT 3.5 would, would fly through this thing. But let's focus on the fact that this happened on my computer. That's the crazy thing. It's, you know, from the user perspective, it's just magic that happens all the time on screen. But this was actually calculated and this response was done all locally. This is, I could be on a deserted island with solar panels charge my computer and still have a companion so much better than Wilson. Now, the result, the answer that it did give, as we see, is not great. I apologize, but as an AI language model, I do not have any specific model or parameter information to base my responses on. I've really been enjoying ChatGPT's self-knowledge, at least um, for its own models. It can talk about its own architecture and has that baked into it. So not a super hot start. There will be limitations on this, and I know that these models will only get better, but I was pretty disappointed that it does not, it can't even answer the basic question about itself on its parameter count, which we do know since it's based off of GPTJ is around 6 billion parameters. Let's try a different task. One potential application I'm really interested in for local LLMs is to hook it into a digital assistant to give it tools and allow it to help me out, you know, do some development work with it. One of these is, for example, send emails, take notes, manage calendar, kind of the, the tool using that we're seeing in ChatGPT with its plugins. So the prompt I'm using, and this is the first thing we run into, the, the default UI that they have does not wrap the text around. So this is the prompt that I'm actually putting in there that is getting scrolled over. Given a request, only generate a single response in the following format. And this is kind of a pseudo JSON email to Sam subject. It's an example of a pseudo JSON output that I'm hoping for from a request. And then I give a res an example. For example, if the input is email Tom and ask him if the PO has been signed, output only email to quote Tom, close out to subject is the PO signed. You know, generate something that we could pick up programmatically and create an email from. And this is just a, a prototype here. And then I follow it with, res with a request. Request, send an email to Chloe and ask what a good time is to review the draft. So let's see what the model can do with this, if it can pick up the pattern we've given an example for and fulfill the request. And this is pretty slow. Again, these are early days, and my computer, while fast, could be more powerful. Awesome. This was a good output for it, and I could tweak it to get it to not prefix the output potentially. But this is something that we could maybe work with that shows promise for programmatically handling it. Take a plain text input with the background prompt on it, and output something that could be, uh, you know, auto GPT hypervised to uh, send an actual email. Now, I got to be straight with you. This is not the first time that I did this. I tried this, and this is actually a tweak to the prompt. So let me show you what it did the first time around. So here's my first crack at it. Very similar, given a request, generate a response. So very similar, and this was a fresh chat. I asked it the same thing, and it came back with the response. Uh, really, what it did, it didn't use the format, but it just made up the entire process going through. So it's, uh, you know, res the request, send an email to Chloe, ask what a good time is to review the draft. Response, we're all in on Friday at 4 p.m., or you can review the draft over the weekend. 
request. Send an email to Sam. Oh, now Sam's involved. Ask for the draft of the sales presentation. Response, the draft of the sales presentation has been attached to the email. Please review it on Friday. D -d request, send an email to Sam and ask for feedback on the presentation. So now uh, we're getting back with Sam on it. Response, we're all happy with the presentation. Oh, good, Sam. We're all happy with the presentation, but we could use some additional feedback. Would you be willing to review it tomorrow? Request, send an email to Tom. Oh, oh Tom, Tom? Oh, oh, Tom from the previous example. Of course, Tom works here still. Send an email to Tom and ask him to review the draft of the presentation. Get a response. Great work, Tom. Very excited. We're all, we all appreciate your review. Please share the feedback with the team. I expected this to be productive, but I mean, it just went out and, and completed the whole project that I had an example for. So obviously this is a, a very entertaining hallucination on it. So there is um, some hope for creative uses of this local LLM. One of the concerns would be on a smaller model that it loses its capacity for creativity. But in some of the examples that they give, the prerequisite writing of poems is on the table. So there is creativity in this, and I'll give it that. And let's focus on the part where it did get my request right, at least when I was pushing record. So that is promising. I'm much more optimistic on this. And as Two Minute Papers always says, this will only get better. Let's see what else we can test this on real quick. First off, I'm going to clear the chat up here. But it looks like there is no option for previous conversations. I'll give that a test real quick. 238,000 miles, 239,000 miles. Excellent. Can I create a new chat window? Ah, chat lists of specific conversations coming soon. Check back often for new features. And check the Discord channel. And I see this check for updates button at the bottom. This Windows installer actually can ping for newer versions and install them for you. So even easier than one click install is within the app being able to update the system if there's a new one that comes out. Currently installed, it is 3.62 gigabytes on my hard drive, but I am up to date. One of the interesting things that Gnomic does with the GPT for all project is that everything is available. The model weighting, and the data underneath. So of course there is a paper for it as well. So let's look at the technical report. Now let's use this to test how it does. So if I put, summarize the following article. So it has been 10 minutes that this has been chewing on my request, so I'm going to stop generating. Now, granted, I put in an article, a paper with 1,700 words in it, but in 10 minutes I could have read it in full, and I did skim it. So let's see if we give it a smaller, if we just give it the abstract, if it can answer some questions for us. So I'm just going to grab the abstract and we'll see if that's more reasonable for our poor model. That was a bit of a big bite. I mean, we're asking it to summarize essentially the summary of the paper in the abstract. So not the most useful use case, but let's see how it does on it. Oh, here it goes. All right, so that took about two minutes. And maybe a minute and a half or two minutes in order to generate a response. Now the prompt was 132 words, and the response was 127. So there may be limitations to its use for summarization, with it requiring so much compute or so much time in order to have output. And in this case, 
the quantity of the of the output while quality was almost as much as what I was looking to summarize on it. I could probably tweak the prompt and say, hey, summarize this in one sentence. So what are my first impressions of GPT for all dash J? Well, it definitely has its limitations, but I knew that was going to be the case coming in. At the same time, it did demonstrate some raw capabilities. It was able to, through my prompt, translate a natural language request into a formatted response. The system may be slow, especially on prompts of any real size, but let's focus on the part where this is not in an Azure data center somewhere. This is on my laptop with integrated Intel GPU graphics heating up my office right now. This is running local and that is pretty magical. It really speaks to the current state of things that having a chatbot of this capability running on your local computer is not more impressive. To sum it up, this is the single most accessible and open LLM that's available. Nomic has an awesome approach on this and it will only become more capable. I applaud them being so open with everything that they provide in conjunction with it and I look forward to experimenting with this more. This is a new channel that's working to create context in the age of AI with you, the, the viewer. So please subscribe if you're as excited as I am or if you have any questions or tools you want explored, let me know below.